Hello friends! Welcome to my channel, or back to my channel as the case may be. Today I'm going to share another Japanese myth. This one is how food came to humanity. So there are two primary versions of this myth. I'm going to share both of them today because they're both relatively short. The first one begins thusly. Amaterasu heard of a kami capable of creating food. Her name was Ukamochi no Kama, no Kami, and she lived in the land of the central reeds. Wanting to learn more of this marvelous power, she sent her brother, Sugiyomi no Mikoto, to inquire after her. When he arrived at her dwelling, Ukamochi no Kama, no Kami, I promise one of these days I will say it right, Ukamochi no Kami took rice and other foods from her mouth, placed them on offering tables, and gave them to the visiting Kami. Sukiyomi no Mikoto was insulted as what he saw as polluted food coming from her body. And so he killed the food goddess. Real sweet of him, right? Amaratsu was furious that her messenger would act in such a barbaric manner, vowing never to set eyes on him again, anointing him the god of the moon. For Amaratsu is the goddess of the sun, thereby ensuring that she would never see him again. She then went to visit the body of the dead food deity. In the corpse's head, she found horses and cattle. Millet was found in her forehead and silkworms in her eyebrows. Rice was in her belly, and wheat was in her genitals. These were presented to Amaratsu, who decreed that this would now be the food for humanity. So that's the first version. The second version includes one of our favorite characters out of Japanese mythology, which would be Susano, because those who know about Japanese mythology know if Susano was involved, well, problems were going to ensue. So the second version that I have found goes thusly. One of the many times Susano was exiled, he sought shelter with the kami Ugetsuhime. She took various foods out of her nostrils, mouth, and rectum, and offered them to him. Insulted by this seemingly polluted food, he killed his hostess. Various foodstuffs and other things useful for humankind grew out of her eyes, her nose, her mouth, and so forth. As you can see, one is considerably shorter than the other, but there are some interesting parallels between the two. As I've read some anthropologist notes about these two versions of the myth, they point out that, particularly in feudal Japan and even before feudal Japan, women were responsible for most of the food preparation. Men didn't do much when it came to housework and house, the, the feeding of the household. And when we look at history, how did women tend to survive unhealthy relationships? Well, they poisoned their husbands. This does not paint women in the best light now, does it? Even though they were the ones providing sustenance for their civilization. Just something interesting to note. I hope you enjoyed these shorter myths, and you'll, you'll see as I continue doing some more of these myths, uh, particularly as I've been reading through them, the, the Japanese ones, they have a lot of references to, to genitalia and just crude acts, but it's because mythology was explaining human nature. It was explaining the world. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, leave a like, leave a comment. Have you heard another version of this story? If you have, let me know in the comments, and I look forward to seeing you again. Until next time, walk in the light, my friends. Bye!